there's gonna be a lot of printing today. So I better get started to prepare the paper already. And then I can go back to preparing the negatives. And that does include printing them on transparent film. But for now we don't need that, so let's get that out of the way. I already looked at what negatives I want to prepare and finish up for today. And I think I'm gonna work in batches, at least for now, and see how far I get. So that will be four big ones. I'm gonna need one, four. Four medium ones. Since I'm gonna be working with the cyano types, it's probably best to turn off the lights, let down the blinds. Wow, that worked it the first time. Look at this. Usually it does this. <laughs> Because these chemicals do react to sunlight, to UV light, and I gotta protect them. So I'm gonna go ahead and prime these papers in this dark room, and we'll see each other afterwards. First, we gotta still mix the, the cyanotype. So it's two solutions, A and B, you know, and you shake them, and then you mix them. But I'm gonna turn off the light again. <laughs> All right, now that there's light again. <laughs> we are, uh, what happened? I finished up the priming of the paper and put them in my bedroom to, to dry, let the blinds down. So I'm not gonna show you my unorganized bedroom. It's not gonna happen. Just know they are now drying. And while we do that, while they do that, we gotta take care of the printing. So I got this transparent film. I'm gonna make sure to put them in the right way. And then we're gonna go. All right, to make sure they are printed correctly, I use PDFs and print them because I don't have a big printer and I'm gonna need four films to <laughs> print them and then stick them together with transparent tape. Okay, let's do that. Now we wait for the first few to appear. And then I'm gonna be a little bit of multitasking to print them while gluing them together, print, gluing, so I don't have to wait. So with the spooky season starting, I made these pullover and it's pretty damn cozy. On my profile you do find the clicky thing where you can order it and if you do that I'll send it to you and then you have it. Right, now that we're done with this, which is surely not a work that makes me want to pull out my hair. I'm not sure if I'm lucky or unlucky. It's a little cloudy today and with a little, I do mean a lot, but there is sun right now, you know, at least enough to throw a shadow. We'll see how it works. I just had a little breakfast and now the sun is gone again. There's no shadows whatsoever. It's just very cloudy. And worse, there is thunder coming. That's unfortunate. Since I'm gonna be working on the paper again, turning off the lights. Wait, wait. Yeah, this works, this works great. And here I got my frames to put the paper in and the negatives to put them into the sun. Just until I'm finished with the other ones to limit the exposure it gets to light. Even though this takes quite a while to expose, like probably with this weather about 20 minutes to half an hour, I still want to control it. I still want to control it. <sighs> All right, while these works are getting exposed, I'm gonna have to prepare the washing part of this whole thing. So this is just normal water. We're just gonna have to rinse it off once it's fully exposed, which 
I hope will be enough because it is very cloudy. I'm gonna have to figure out another way once uh, winter is coming. Because it's already September and it's definitely not getting better. And I don't want to sit here in the cold weather and rinsing them out outside. That's, that's not fun. Right, I'm upstairs again in my studio. And while we're waiting, I technically have a break because I'm just waiting for the exposure to be done. But I do have more paper that I want to expose, so I'm gonna have to finish the editing or make it print, print ready, and that's what I'm, I'm gonna do now. All right, they're exposed now. I hope enough. I'm not really 100% on it. But it's time to, to rinse them now. And I hope you forgive me for not getting the perfect shot of this. It's a little, you know, it's a little time sensitive. This looks so fancy though. There's a little portraits of mine with the light moving. We're going to talk about it later. We're surely going to talk about everything later. Let's turn it around. Before we get into the reveal, I do want to take you with me to how I got one of those shots. Is it okay if it gets wet? This bird. A bird bird. Doing bird things. I hope this works. Look at that, I did it. You need to go further down. Further down? Yeah. Getting pretty damn cold, man. My chest isn't underwater. You're in, you're in the pond. Okay. Your shoulders are down. Okay. I can't. Let's look at the exact moment. We get a little bit of fresh river water up my nostril. See this? See it? Right there. Right there it's entering. Mm. Cold. So I think to start this off, it's probably the best if we just address the ones in the on top. At least I got that work out of it. You know, which I think in the end of the day, it's definitely worth it. It was worth it. Don't ever want to do it again because it was freezing cold. It's crazy. But I like the work and that's what it's usually all about, right? So I have all the works here and my goal is to go through them, look at them with you, um, talk about them, talk about the pros of using cyanotype and connection to photography as well because I mean it is a print of photography but it surely like opens up possibilities that are different from from photography I think and I do want to go over them and just show show examples of of what's been going on how how I work through it like when I started out Jesus when I, when I started making these photos, I just finished painting a lot of portraits. And I guess I'm, I'm just drawn to people naturally. And the way I usually take reference photos is that I, that I film my subject. And from this, there was this idea of of making them, you know, making the whole whole video I take just viable as an artwork, and I think it's it's quite interesting to have a more less perfectionistic approach towards um, portraiture, 
and I think it just shows more of the more of the person that is actually there, you know. In a way, with portraiture, you try to you can try to capture essence, and I feel like these almost film strip like film strip like photographies just show like. <laughs> they they just show you know just the just the being you know the, the physical body just the the person you know not not my thoughts not my my ideas not my political stance not not any any of that it just shows you know it strips me of a lot but then it, it gives a lot as well. And that's why I like these. That was the, the concept behind it as well. And then I, during this still portraiture like phase, which is um, an ongoing thing with my work, like people, I did when I was like, I know, like this, a little bit more abstract, a little bit more surrealistic. And I, I feel like um, that's where I want to talk about um, the possibilities with cyanotypes. Because this is not one photo, as you can see, there's like double exposure going on. There are like these, these shapes that, that are photographed paper, actually on a different photo and then cut out and put in and they are supposed to represent the moon phases right it's like small almost half half you know it's, it's growing and they're like two different ones layered and different direction there's a whole lot, lot of thought of going into this but i think best is if you just look at it and enjoy it um but talking about the Yo, what? Talking about the talking about the possibilities of cyanotypes, I feel like it opens up the the possibility of of collages, right? Of playing around with what you photograph, because as well like editing those those negatives, they are vastly forgiving because it's it's first of all it's a monochrome print the ones I've done and that way since it's high contrast as well it's it's so forgiving just to edit because most of them is just one color you know you can do a lot of fading into that one color uh, uh, and the editing part is, is, is easier than if you want, would want to do it in a, in a photorealistic sense of with color, with shading, and all that jazz. Oh, you know, there, there are positives and negatives. I do feel like the, one of the positive things about cyanotypes as well, it's quite easy, since it's a high contrast um, process, it's quite easy to create sort of a, a loomy, loomy vibe with it, you know. Um, I think I've heard otherworldly from people describing my work and I really like that. I think otherworldly is such a good description for, for the works. And I'm really going for that feeling as well. I just didn't know how to put it in words myself and sometimes it's really good to talk with other people what they're seeing to just see that sense and in a way these these works are almost silent like the portraitures they they're almost like quiet not silent but you know quiet and still even though there's a lot of movement going on and i think that's part of the Part of the material used to, so the, the actual cyanotype that make them so so quiet and otherworldly. I think that's that's a great 
additive to s some works. And then, but, but even, so as I noticed that, I did, I, I wanted to explore that. And with that, I did more of a, you know, more, more movement, you know, almost groovy type of, with the leaves, oops, with the leaves just jumping around, sort of. Um, type of artwork, <coughs> excuse me. But on the same hand, I didn't want to go empty handed and be like, oh, I just want to explore the, explore the um, groovy side of it. I want to explore the still side of it as well. So I did one, one like that, um, where I would explore more of the groovy side, uh, the, the still side, the quiet side, excuse me. And I feel like both of them actually work, so the Siano type is not limited to having to one feeling. That, so, so the Siano type is not, you know, um, it's not the sole reason for giving that feeling. It's as well the photography that I make to to portray that, and the Siano type is still open to give other other feelings than this Lumi. Um, quiet feeling. The the blue definitely supports this otherworldly kind of kind of view, which I think is great for my works. And uh, I've been enjoying cyanotype for a few weeks for sure, and it got me back into photography a little bit more again. And we'll, we will see where we you know where we go from there. <coughs> All right, and I guess we will then venture it into. Back into more abstract kind of photography again, portraiture. These are more, these are almost surrealistic, I feel. Ah, one more thing, in case you already saw one that you just have to have. They're not online on my website yet, so. ta -da! Sucks for you! <laughs> I mean, I'm partially kidding. I'm partially kidding. They're not up on my website yet, um, but you can follow my Instagram, and I'll, I'll post there when I when I put them up. Or DM me or something, you know. Just get in touch. Love you. Take care. All right. However, you can already look at them if you're just wanting to look at them on my website. I do already have them in my portfolio. You know, just not in my store yet. I do think they have like a lot of meaning in them. Maybe they want to convey something, they want to talk with me about something and in a way in this one I feel like it's one of, it wants to chat with me about about the past and the present and and then there are these eyes closed so if it, there's a lot going on I think in my head when I do these works and it's really hard to put in, in the words there's just something, something fitting within this whole exploration. I don't really necessarily look at my artworks as, as an expression. I look at it as an exploration, experiment, uh, trial and error of, of thoughts, of ideas, and something I can connect to. You know, I'm looking for something. I'm always looking, I'm searching. So with this work, I did, I did feel like the, the closed eyes and uh, this one actually, I've, not necessarily this one, but in general, some of the portraiture that I've done eventually sparked my path into the, to the next series that I already started. It's vastly different from this, but you know, it's the closed eyes that sparked my interest about, um, again, about portraiture and how portraiture usually tries to distill this essence of the person into it and the question of what is left if we strip that essence of, of people so closing eyes is a great way to to limit connection with the subject and am i exploring this i, I think i'm gonna have to do another video so that's an, another topic so there we are again at the water, at the water one where I freeze my butt off. I did like it, 
there are a lot of different edits I got out of it. So that was great that I not only got one photo out of it. And I think that's as well the strength of the Ciano type where it's um, this collage making, you know, you can use, you can use, you, you reuse your shots, maybe layer them in different ways or just try different approaches, vastly different approaches. And since the editing is so forgiving, it's, it's quite easy to, to make different, different, actual different artworks, not just, oh, uh, you're not sure which photo to pick, you know? I actually like, try it again, do it a little bit different, try something else with it. And that's what I really enjoy about it. Now we're going back to the, to the portraiture and like a long, I really like this one honestly. I, I might, I'm thinking of actually doing, um, releasing this in, in, <clears throat> in color as well. I just want to see it in color. I think I've only seen it in black and white or blue. So I might just, I might just go that that way. Maybe I upload it to my Instagram eventually. We'll see. Yeah, and then we have come full circle. So I did a few ones of like roofs, which I'm still in the process of it. But I really like this pattern, and it just reminds me so much. Of, of these woods, you know, the portraitures. Why I did like this film strip kind of feeling. And I mean, the, the portraitures have as well another aspect. In, in one of them, I'm, I'm, I'm turning myself around like 360 degrees. And in this one particularly, uh, there's just uh, the light moving, which was actually my wife walking around me with the light in case you're wondering <laughs> how that was done. Um, but since, again, since it's so forgiving, um, it's very easy to, to edit um, photos like that where I can just edit her out because it's such high contrast that, and one color. It's very forgiving. Okay, I've said forgiving a million times. I think I, w I think I'm just. I just want to underline that, in case you're thinking about trying it, I definitely can recommend. This was an absolute blast, and the level of entry is pretty damn low. Like one of those bottle sets is like fifteen dollars, fifteen euros. Sorry, in Europe, and obviously you will need the paper. I I used watercolor paper for it. Depending on how big you want to make it, and then you need, so you, so you end up at, I don't know, I don't know, all depends on what paper you're choosing, what size you want to print, if you maybe have transparent film at home already, or if you're going to get it printed at a print, so it all depends, but I think the, the level of entry is, depending on art, is pretty low. Just considering watercolor is, you know, you have to get all the different colors and watercolors is already quite inexpensive, I would say. You have to get some, some things that are expensive. So, great plus, it's inexpensive. If you're gonna do a lot of it, it's not so inexpensive anymore. But to just dabble in, it's pretty inexpensive and it surely was a blast. Oh, I just, I just saw there's another one. Look at this. I did some images of clouds as well, you know, there's like a tree flying, which is kind of fun. It gives us otherworldly feeling. Another, another one just to add to it. It as well like preserves this otherworldly feeling, this grand feeling. So 
so yeah if you want to check them out on my website i have most of them i will be uploading them to my instagram if you stuck out this long i'm gonna give you a little sneak peek for the next few series i don't know which one there there are a bunch of them i think i'm just gonna show this one like a little bit of color you know to all this to all this monochromeness monochromeness i don't know yeah so yeah here I am laying on the floor with my clothes next to myself. Little sneak peek. By the way, I released a book earlier this year. It's called Context. And it's filled with portraiture. Um, and they are conveyed. No, the conveyed is not the right word. It's portraitures and there are poems. Yes, there are poems with them. You know, the way I worked was with, I would paint them and I would think about um, the people in those portraits. You know, like empathetic work. I wrote poems with each of them and there were about, about 18 or something. And it would mean the world to me if you would go check it out. I upload snippets to it on my Instagram so you find things there and you find the full version on my website as well and that's it. it would mean everything to me if you would go check it out thanks